Hello everybody, it's Lewis here from Physics Online. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and that means you'll stay updated with all of the new material I'm gonna be putting out over the next few years. So, what is the big difference between GCSE and A-Level? Well, first of all, A-Level, there's a lot more physics involved and there's a lot more work, there's a lot more maths. But in this video, I thought I'd go through my top five differences going from GCSE to A-Level. So the first one is the way that we show units. At GCSE, we might put meters per second with M slash S. Now that works at GCSE when we've got simple units. At A level, we start to look at maybe derived units and we have things to the power of two, things to the power of minus three. And what we do is at A level, we write things as M S to the minus one rather than M slash S. Okay, it's a small change, but it's definitely something you're going to notice right at the start of A-level. And it just means when it comes to looking at derived units, because we can represent joules and newtons in terms of the seven base units, it makes a lot more sense when you're actually writing things all on one line, rather than having lots of these kind of um, slash signs all over the place. The second thing is that standard form is used all of the time. GCSE, we tend to look at normal numbers. You know, there's a 50 kilogram person accelerated at two meters per second. When it gets to A-level, we go really, really small and like incredibly small when we're looking inside the atom at these kind of really, really small things which have a very small charge and a very small mass. Also, we go really, really big when we're looking at gravitational fields and space and cosmology. We've got things in the order of 10 to the 30. So we start to use standard form all the time. It's just the convention that we use to go from the really, really big to the really small and actually make our numbers usable. The next thing is we have this change in terminology. Now at GCSE, we might talk about the voltage of a battery. In actual fact, a lot of you might have been using the word potential difference. So the battery might have a potential difference of nine volts and that means there's going to be nine volts in the circuit as well. At A-level, we have some new terms introduced, including electromotive force. So for example, if you had a battery, it really it's got an EMF of nine volts, and that means across a component, we'd have a potential difference of nine volts. And this is because we have to be really clear about our definitions. Most people at GCSE just know about voltage being like the energy in the circuit, or something, a vague thing a bit like that. Really, when we're looking at EMF or potential difference, it's the energy transferred per unit charge. Okay, now EMF is effectively the energy transferred into the circuit and potential difference is the energy transferred out of the circuit. So again, at A level, there's some terminology that you have to be very, very specific with. My fourth difference going on to A level is that there are certain things that you maybe didn't think about at GCSE. So for example, the atomic model, we have this positive nucleus surrounded by negative electrons. Okay, that's all fine. But then why is it that the positive things aren't repelling from the other positive protons in the nucleus? Why is it that these negative electrons aren't just being attracted and actually go into that positive nucleus? Because we know that opposite charges attract. And actually this is where there's certain things where we don't tell you the whole truth. So for example, there are other forces involved. There's actually a thing called the strong force, which is quite strong, and the weak force, a little bit weaker. And it's these forces that act within the nucleus and actually within the particles themselves sometimes that actually holds it together. So what we do at A-level is we tend to introduce new ideas that kind of build on the stuff from GCSE, which I guess goes on to fact number five, is that actually at A-level, we realize that a lot of the models we used at GCSE aren't necessarily true. GCSE, we know that light is a wave. Yeah, pretty straightforward. At A level, we actually tell you that light is also a particle and it's a wave at the same time. And there's this kind of wave particle duality. So photons are like these little bundles of energy. Are they particles? Well, they exhibit particle-like behavior at certain times. At other times, they exhibit wave-like behavior. Because at A-level, what we're doing is we're developing the models. Now, you can still understand about uh, the electromagnetic spectrum at GCSE just by thinking about the wave model. But actually, when we start looking at things like the photoelectric effect, often in year 12, we realise that a lot of these models are just approximations, just like the models that we use to maybe show the electricity in that circuit. These are just ways of trying to think about the real world. So, um, 
A level, so much better than GCSE because you go really in depth, it gets really interesting, a lot more challenging, there's a lot more mathematics involved, and quite frankly, it does get very hard. But you will get there at the end. And if you speak to anybody who's maybe gone through A level physics and now they're going off to university, they look back on it and go, actually, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Obviously, that's with hindsight. So those are some of my differences. If you're doing A level at the moment, please put in the comments beneath this video what you found to be the biggest difference. If you've got any hints and tips, if there are things that you think anybody coming on to do A-level physics should know about, please post a comment underneath this video because I'm sure that whatever stage you are in your education, you know, it's something which is worth talking about and discussing. And if you're a GCSE student thinking about doing A-level in the future, just put your comments beneath this video and I'm sure somebody will answer it. So if you haven't already done so, make sure that uh, you like this video now and you subscribe to me on YouTube to stay updated with all of the other videos I'll be releasing over the next few years. Thank you.